And welcome to the notes for graphing logarithmic functions. And before um, watching this video and taking notes, you want to make sure that you've completed the math lab on Schoology uh, to introduce logarithmic functions and their transformations. And um, all we're really doing then in these notes is summarizing what you discovered in that transformations lab and then working through some examples together. So in the lab, we learned that um, log base 2 of x is the inverse of the exponential function y equals 2 to the x. So in um, the graph that we see here, uh, recall that inverse functions are a reflection over the diagonal line y equals x. So as we reviewed in that math lab, any point that's on the exponential function y equals 2 to the x, for example, this anchor point 1 comma 2, right, if I reflect that over the line y equals x, then on the inverse, the corresponding point switches the x and the y coordinate and becomes 2 comma 1. And similarly, if we look at the point on y equals 2 to the x, the exponential function has a y-intercept of 0, comma 1, then the corresponding point on the log base 2 of x, since they're inverses, switches that x and y, and we have the point 1, comma 0. And then our third anchor point um, on the graph of 2 to the x is negative 1 reciprocal of b, and the b is 2, so negative 1 comma 1 half. So when we reflect that anchor point, we get this point here at 1 half comma negative 1. Okay, so um, when you open up to the first page on the inside, you'll notice that the parent graph then of log base b to the x always passes through the same three anchor points as um, y equals b to the x, only we're switching the x and y. So our guide points, instead of going through 1 comma b, are going through b comma 1. Instead of the y-intercept being 0, 1, now the log base b of x has an x-intercept of 1 comma 0. And then our third anchor point, instead of being negative 1 comma 1 over b, we switch the x and y and get negative 1, or sorry, 1 over b comma negative 1. Okay, the vertical asymptote for the parent graph is going to be along the y-axis, so that's the equation x equals 0. And the domain is half-bounded from 0 non-inclusive to positive infinity, the range is fully unbounded, negative infinity to positive infinity. So our transformations of logarithmic functions um, in transformation form, the a, um, the b, the c, the h, and the k, each will produce a different transformation on the function. The k and the h are the rigid transformations. So x minus h is going to shift the graph to the right h units. x plus h shifts the graph to the left h units. A positive k shifts the graph up k units. And a negative k shifts the graph down k units. Okay, the um, a and the c are going to control reflections, which are also rigid transformations. So if the c is negative, that's a reflection over the y-axis. And if the a is negative, that's a reflection over the x-axis. The a and the c also control dilations, which are non-rigid transformations. So if the a is um, greater than 1 in absolute value, that's a vertical stretch. And if the a in absolute value is less than 1, which would be a fraction between 0 and 1, that's a vertical shrink. Then if c in absolute value is greater than 1, that's a horizontal shrink.
And if C in absolute value is less than one, which is a fraction between zero and one, that produces a horizontal stretch. Okay, and those transformations are all exactly the same as what occurs for any parent function. Um, we use these same transformations for exponential functions, square root functions, rational functions, um, polynomials, all of them. The thing that was different, if you recall, about the exponential is also different about the logarithm, and that's the b. So um, our transcendental functions, the exponential and log, have a b, which is the base. And that b is used to identify these three guide points on the graph. The x-intercept at 1, 0, b comma 1, and reciprocal of b comma negative 1. Okay, the um, special thing about logarithms is that when your base is 10, that has a unique name called a common log. And when your base is e, and we'll talk about e in more detail in the next lesson, that's called a natural log. Okay, when you look at your graphing calculator um, and you find that log button um, right here. Okay, the log um, button on your calculator is always a common log. It's a base 10. So you cannot use that button to graph a log base 2 or a log base 4. Right, Only um, the button is used for common log, which is base 10. The one under it that says LN Right, that stands for um, natural log, and that's a logarithm of base e. And you can remember that if you look right above in the blue paint there, it says e to the x. Right, The natural log is the inverse of e to the x. Same thing for the log button up above it in blue paint. It says 10 to the x, and a common log is the inverse of the exponential with a base of 10. So these two buttons on your calculator, just remember the log is base 10, the ln, the natural log, is base e, and those are the only two bases that you can graph in the calculator. You can't graph them um, if they have a, another base other than 10 or e, for example, log base 2 or log base 4. Okay, so looking at example 1, okay, we're going to graph y equals negative 2 log base 2 of the quantity x plus 2 minus 3. And since this is a base 2, we can't use the graphing calculator to graph it. So we have to understand what each of these transformations does to the function so that we can transform the parent graph and get an accurate sketch. So if we start by identifying the a, that's a negative 2, the b is the base of the log, that's a positive 2. The c is the coefficient on the x, and our x doesn't have a coefficient in front of it, so we remember that that's a 1. Then h is um, the opposite sign of what we see here. Um, x minus negative 2 is x plus 2, so our h is a negative 2. We're going to the left. And then our k is the constant at the end, including the sign, so k is negative 3. Okay, the asymptote, um, because we have a vertical asymptote, for the parent graph, it's going through the line um, x equals 0. Right Now, if we do a horizontal translation to the left or the right, that's going to change the position of our vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is always going to be equal to the h. So my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. So we can come over to the graph and put a dashed line through x equals negative 2 to show that vertical asymptote. Okay, then our anchor points are um, going to come from the b. Remember, the x-intercept of the parent graph is always 1, 0. And then the point b, 1, which would be 2, 1. And then reciprocal of b, 1. And the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. 
then to take care of the vertical stretch of 2 and the reflection in the x-axis, we're going to multiply all of those y values by the a, which is negative 2. So each of the x-coordinates stays the same, 1, 2, and 1 half. And then we take 0 times negative 2 is 0. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Then we're going to do the horizontal um, stretch or shrink um, or a reflection in the y-axis by dividing the x by the c, which is 1. Now when we divide each of these x values by 1, we get the same point back again because there is no ver um, sorry horizontal stretch or shrink or reflection in the y-axis. So I'm just going to cross that one out and move on to the horizontal translation, which is going to add h to the x, and our h is negative 2. So our new x is going to be 1 plus negative 2, which is negative 1, and the y stays the same. Then 2 plus negative 2 is 0, and the y stays the same. Then 1 half plus negative 2 is negative 1.5, and then the y stays the same. Then our vertical translation is accomplished by adding k to the y value, and our k is negative 3, so this is going to go down 3 units. Our x's are all going to stay the same, so negative 1, 0, and negative 1.5. And then to find the new y coordinate, we take 0 plus negative 3 and get negative 3. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5, and then 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. So we're going to plot these transformed points now at negative 1, negative 3, 0, negative 5, and then negative 1.5, negative 1. Okay, I gave you an extra guide point already here on the graph since we haven't learned yet how to evaluate a log function um, by substituting a number for x. We're going to do that in um, a future lesson. So for now, I know that this point 2, negative 7 is also on the graph. So my function is going to come along this vertical asymptote, then bend through these transformed points, and that would be the graph of my log function. Okay, the domain is based on this um, horizontal as or sorry vertical asymptote at negative two so my function is starting at negative two non-inclusive and heading to positive infinity uh, for the x values the range is the y values and the range of all logarithmic functions is fully unbounded so negative infinity to positive infinity